at the special teaching. Uh, let's break it down with Pastor Dele Matthews. This evening we're talking um, about engaging the enemy at the gates. Uh, the enemy is um, um, Satan at the head of the forces of darkness and with men that are physical who occupy um, different strategic positions in the world of man and who continually steer men or mankind to the will of the enemy um, that is against God. They continually steer men against God. These are the people we have coming against, or we are coming against. Scripture says through Paul, Ephesians chapter six verse ten, said the weapons of our warfare. And, uh, rather, it says um, we, we war not against uh, flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, and against spiritual wickedness in high places and rulers of the darkness of this world. You know, and um, so these are the people we war against. Uh, these are the entities, or rather, in the rather same people, the entities that we war against. Um, and we have to engage these enemies because if we don't engage them at the gates, they are likely to break down the gates of Zion. They are likely to break down the gates of Zion and begin to bring their influences on the church. What does it mean for them to break down the gates of Zion? Um, breaking down the gates of Zion is to um, remove the dichotomy between the church and the world. Remove the gorge. You remember Abraham said to the uh, to the to the rich man. He said, "There's a great chasm in between we and you that those who want to cross cannot cross from us to you, and those who want to cross from you to us cannot do so because of the great chasm that is between the two of us, the two segments of where we are abiding." Now, um, so when the gates are broken, what does it mean? What does it signify? If the gates of Zion were broken, it would mean that. The delineating um, structure, uh, the delineating structure between the church and the world is removed. So you, there's no difference. You can't. You, there's no difference between the church and the world. That's what it means. Um, and if you look at what is happening today, you will see that there are incursions of the enemy against the church, against the kingdom of God. Let me not even say the church because you see, this time we are in the kingdom age, you know. And so God is uh, bringing forth a people that would know and understand that we're in the kingdom age and therefore would arise against the enemy and take the battle to the gates. You know, it is not for fun that the Lord said, uh, he gives us strength to those who take the battle to the gates. So the battle have to come to the gates of the adversary, the adversary of God. Hallelujah. So uh, there, there, there is usually no static position. Uh, between us and the world. It is either we are making incursions against the world or the world is making incursions against us or into us, you know. So, and especially at the last days, these last days when, um, especially at these last days, or in these last days when the Lord has um, signified that at the, during the period in which we are, which is called the day of the Lord, you can check the new heavens and the new earth. I did episode 1 to 14 on the new heavens and new earth, and it will show you what the day of the Lord uh, refers to. Now, in this in this period of the day of the Lord, when uh, that is when the Lord is coming to take over the systems of this world, the, 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 the powers of this world, the powers of this age, will come to north effectively. And then instead of them, uh, the, 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 the power of God, the people of God, the principalities of God shall begin to rule in as we come into the age of the kingdom. This is the real new age. It is not, uh, it is not, um, um, uh, we, you know, people talk about the new age. The new age, which the world is expecting, has Satan under, I mean, as overlord over it. You know, and uh, like we said, there are principalities and powers that are in the spirit realm which control the heavenlies that govern humanity. And then they also now have potentates that are physically um, resident, domiciled on the earth and in the world that rule in diverse areas of human endeavors. They rule geographically, they rule uh, the academic uh, uh, um, um, segment of mankind. Let, let me show you this. And then they, 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 keep, they keep increasing in power and in influence until they want to, God promises, and rather God actually foresees a period of time where they will effectively uh, um, magnify themselves in the heart of unsaved man. He says, I said, I tell you that in the last days, perilous times shall come for men shall become lovers of themselves. That means even at the time when Paul was talking, it was not yet so. There was still chivalry. There was still nobility. 
even among the unsaved world. But now we see that every man loves themselves. That's just what the world is about. And a lot of people don't really care about who dies as long as they get their box, they get their money, they get, they, they, he said, men shall become lovers and say of themselves, they, they will not have, um, um, they will not be able to, they, so you, they will not respect concord, they will be, they will be vile, they will be, they will be desperate, they will be wicked, wickedness shall permeate, uh, uh the society of man, that's what, that's what scripture says, in other words, it was not so, even before this time, let me show you this, um, there was a time called the, the Middle Ages. After the Middle Ages, you know, you know we began to have um, the Enlightenment in Europe. Um, when did the Middle Ages uh, end? Um, that was at about the time when Martin Luther proclaimed, that is a Catholic monk, proclaimed that the just shall live by faith. And the light of the gospel went all over the nations of the earth again. And um, gradually, not without mistakes and errors and all of that, but eventually the, 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 uh, um, the word of the Lord went the accuracy of God's word, which brings salvation by faith, went through uh, uh, the entire nations of the earth. And now, um, but, praise God. Sorry, I had calls there coming to my device. Um, so, so eventually, um, uh, but, but let, let that, at that time, it was like the world was born again. The entire world, the entire systems of this world began to gravitate towards God more and more. But also, the 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 um the world the world um the elements of the satanic elements the the elements that are against god in the earth and in the world also began to grow you know they they, they recognized that a new season had come and that they were going to rule in that day which god had brought and then you had what you call the uh the period of the enlightenment the period of um um, empiricism, where science began to rule the world, and then they began to make science to gravitate towards that which was material, because they wanted to um, block the fact, they, want to, they wanted to remove the fact, and to block the fact of the spirituality of man, from man, because if man could be spiritual, if there could be something bigger than where we are presently, if there should be somebody we have to obey, then the, the faith can could, could take root. So from that time onwards, even until the 19th century, when you had Charles Darwin, when you had Charles Darwin, you know, uh, ruling the day, um, academically, they began to, Charles Darwin had, um, you know, began to propose the, the, or the, what was the selection of species that, um, and then they began to bring the, the, the big bank theory and all of that. And you see, these things were not just, okay, okay, let me just finish explaining about that. The big bank theory, meant that God did not create the world. Before that time, even in schools in America, in the West, where we had schools, we, we, they, 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 they believed in, uh, uh, in creationism. It was that God created the heavens and the earth. But all of this began to come in, into the society of man. And then even the political system, the political system of um, socialism began to come up. Um, um, what do you call it? Extreme Marxism. Extreme socialism, which was communism, Marxism, began to come up. And then, um, uh, uh, even in a psychology, man, uh, the spirit of man began to be eclipsed and everything was, was totaled to the mind of man, to the soul of man, and all of that. You know, everything was totaled to that. You know, and all of this were driving man and, uh, driving man to the point where you, you, we would get to a place where, where we, we see ourselves as only being just material. There was nothing beyond our, our being material. The material world ruled. You know, that was the way it was. It, it was. Uh, it began to grow and grow and grow. And even in psychology, in psychology, we began, okay, like I said, in psychology, we began to total everything to the mind. The, the spirit of man was, was dismissed and all of that. Uh, they, they call it the subconscious and all that. And then they said, you know, the, eventually, it was, it was those who used it for, uh, to get material wealth began to talk about our subconscious as being like, um, what do you call it now? Our, our subconscious has been um, um, uh, our own God. You understand? You, you can get ideas from your subconscious. Have, have you read the book uh, Think and Grow Rich? If you read the book Think and Grow Rich, you see about that. Um, this book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. You know, everything the, the highest man could go, the furthest man can go into his being, could go into his being, began to be just the soul, the mind, the will, and the emotions. Now, now if now there, there was a plan behind that. Now, even if physical man did not understand the plan, but those who dictated this type of knowledge, um, 
uh, which was based on empiricism, empiricism and uh, science, um, had their own mi mind. They had what they wanted to achieve. They had what they wanted to do. They had their goal, you know, and all that. Now, what was the drawing man into? That, that, that kind of knowledge which took place at that time became the, uh, the mother, the parent of the kind of knowledge we study today that we have in our universities. Now, um, okay, look at it. Um, um, uh, there was a man that propounded a particular theory that said uh, we should not teach the children uh, uh, beyond, uh, we should not try to make them uh, different from what they, they, they were um, naturally. You shouldn't beat your child, don't correct the child and all of that. What did all that bring? It brought um, uh, this um, uh, attitude of um, um, deliberate disobedience. We are reaping the fruit of all of those things. And in the field of, of economics, they brought in uh, what you call... Um, um, and the, the, the economics being the, uh, uh, um, the interaction of man between himself and within his social economic environment. And it is predicated on scarce resources, you know. And so all of that, all of the things we have in our educational system were, 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 were brought in by the knowledge of the serpent, by the knowledge of the children of the serpent. Um, you know, because even in even in, in thousands, thousands of years before this time, I was talking about um, knowledge in itself was was um, as well the knowledge of science and mathematics was was a, a, a cultic thing. It was an occultic thing. Like Pythagoras had to be inducted. You had to be inducted into the into the clan of um, of those who understood. Mathematics in Egypt in those days, you know, you know, we know what we call Pythagoras theorem. He had to go to Egypt from Greece to go learn mathematics, the mathematics of structure, the mathematics of uh, the right angle, and all of that, and all those things. You know, you know but the knowledge, knowledge, if it was gained from God, was supposed to lead man into the into more truths of God. But the knowledge that man eventually gained had resulted in what we have today, materiality. Now, eventually. Um, we, we now also now began to see uh, and that a new age was coming. Now, let me round off on that area first and what it did to man. And that kind of knowledge that we have, which was basically material, something that could be seen with the eyes, empiricism, that's something that you could prove, shut natural man down. The great mass of people were shut out of the knowledge of the things of the spirit. Now, those things are going to be coming to to view now. I was saying all of this, I've been saying all of this to underscore the fact of um, um, the fact that man, uh, man, man, the natural man is expecting the dawn of a new age. So, you know, that they see all of these things coming. Now, eventually we got to the, 20, uh, the 21st century, before we even got to that place, knowledge had been going into spiritism, spirit, spirit, spirit things have been happening. Uh, we can see the films, um, where um, uh, this woman that wrote about uh, Harry Potter and the film was, was done. You see all of these uh, films about uh, super power, superheroes and all of that. Those were, those, um, that, that's the uh, evidence, that's some of the evidence that mankind uh, is beginning to dip his hand in the spirit. Why? Because they can see what's going on. They can see what's going on there in the spirit. Praise God. She can see, uh, we can, we, we can see what, they could see what was going on there in the street because the age was about to change. The age was about to move. Now, we talked about the constellations. We talked about the movement of the earth and it's, it, the planets surrounding us into the constellations from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now, what happens is that after that constellation is moved, we have a new age comes. Now, a new age is about to come in now. Uh, the, the constellations actually, uh, the earth moved into the tabernacles of the sun um, as um, every 2,150 years, as it is said. Now, when that happens, what you see, what you see that there will be a change coming in. And like I explained somewhere before, now, these changes coming in are seen by even the unbelieving world because they can read the stars. Now, why, why did he say that? Because when Jesus was about to be born over about 2,000 years ago, over 2,000, over 2000 years ago, when Jesus was about to be born, they saw a star. These guys read things. Now, we're moving to another age now. Do you know Jesus prophesied about that age? It is called the Aquarius age, the age of Aquarius. Or the Aquarian age. The Aquarian is a bearer of pitcher of, of, of water that pours water from up to down. That signifies that 
the spirit is going to be linked to, to material. Spirit, heaven is going to come to the earth. That is what our, our, our God tells us about that. But they see, the guys in the world see that spirit coming on the physical, on the, on the material. Spirit and material coexisting comfortably together and working towards the same goal together. That is what the, the Aquarius age means. You know, Jesus prophesied about that. You know, the, 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 during the period of the, when, the, when the church started, it was the age of Pisces. Pisces is known by two fishes. You know, two fishes. You see there on the Mazaroth, and then what the, what the word called horoscopes is actually called Mazaroth. You can see a, a lot of teaching about them in um, Job chapter thirty-eight. You go in there, it said, "Can you bind the sweet influence of the of the of Pleiades? Can you can you bind Actros and his sons? Can you bring for the sweet influence of Pleiades and all of that?" So those things are there. Now, now, so Jesus Christ came. Uh, it's, you know, Jesus said, uh, said I, I will make you fishers of men because it was the age of Pisces that he came into. Now, this age was, well, that age was designated by God. You know, it was designated by God. He had his calendar structured in the stars. You know, you know Paul, like I've said, if you listen to some of my messages, you know, Paul said something. He said, uh, the things that were, that were known, or that could be known of God, even his eternal power and Godhead, had been made known by the things which are created. They are visible. In those things. Now, one of those things are actually the stars. Hallelujah. You know, we talked about the fact that Abraham came from the place that he called all of the Chaldeans. You know, the Chaldeans were God's stargazers. You know, Daniel was schooled in the art, in their arts and all that. Now, of what benefit are those? The benefit is to, was to them that when they had, because they have that knowledge, they could see what was coming in the, from the heavens and then they were manipulated so that they can gain governance over the earth and so that the earth and the world can be under their rule and that's what they do you know that they're always standing at watch you know when when that angel came to daniel and gabriel came to daniel to bring forth an answer to the lord because they were always watchful these powers don't sleep when they saw the guy coming they waylaid him and they were fighting him and when he was telling daniel he said but michael michael your prince you know, there are princes over every nation that, are of the, that is of the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, so these are, the, but, but for every other nation that is not of God, there are also princes. But these princes are dark princes. The princes that are ordained by the enemy of humanity. Now, so one of the things that God is prophesying, what God is saying in our season and in our time, is that another day is coming when he's going to raise many Michaels to be prince, a prince over the Yoruba nation, to be the prince over the Hausa nation, to be the prince over the Igbo, Igbo, uh, Igbo nation, you know, to be prince over the Jukun nation. He's going to raise princes in the spirit. Hallelujah. And then he's going to raise princes us, we are going to be princes. Hallelujah. We are princes. You know, the Bible says we are going to judge the earth. Do you know the Bible says that he has not subjected the world to come to angels? Do you know that? It's to us that he has subjected it. But one in a certain place saying, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Did you say? He said, for he has not subjected the world to come to angels, to the rule of angels. But one in a, in a place says that, uh, uh, what is man that thou art mindful of him, not the son of man that you regard him? For you have made him a little rather than angels, and you have made him the ruler over all the works of your hands. So, we're going to be rulers. That's what God is saying. This is the, this is the age that they have seen that age is the Aquarian age. It's been over 2,000 years now. Another age is coming to the nations of the earth. Do you know Jesus Christ prophesied about that age coming? He said, when you, when they asked Jesus, they said, where are we going to have the Passover, Master? And he said, you go. Because it was the, time, the, the age of Pisces. From the age of Pisces, as it was establishing the age of Pisces, where men are made fishers. Hallelujah. Because all of the things that are created, they are, they are for him and for his pleasure. Hallelujah. Those two fishes you see, they are for God. They are for the church. They are for Jehovah. They are Yahweh's own. He was the one that put all of those things there in the heavens. So, so the Lord began to prophesy about another day to come. And he said, when you get to the city, at the front of the city, at the gate of the city, you see a man bearing a pitcher of water. Ask him that the Lord and uh, the Master said, "Where have you provided for me to uh, to come into?" Now, so that was a, 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 a man behind a picture. Of that is the exact image that you see uh, in some of the Aquarian uh, designations of the Aquarian uh, age. You know, because so we are coming into an age and a time when the the, the nations uh, are going to experience spirituality in the physical. They are going to see. Now, if you are on the other side, you're going to see, I'm sure you're not going to be on the other side. If you're on the other side of the enemy, you're going to see strong demonic power at work. 
they're going to come into the regular things, your regular daily life. If you have God, you're going to see strong, the power of God, strong. You're going to see angels in manifestation. Cherubs, you're going to be elevated. You're going to see monstrous divine. Okay, let me not use the word monstrous because that's negative. But powerful divine elevations of God's people to the place where they begin, uh, they, they belong. Now, so that's why in this time and age, we have to be very, very sensitive to what God is saying. Now, so we'll be talking about engaging the, uh, taking the, uh, engaging the enemy at the gates. You know, so the Bible says God gives strength to those who take the battle to the gates of the adversary. So we have to engage the enemy at the gates. Praise God. How do we engage the enemy at the gates? There are four, four, uh, areas to which we engage the enemy at the gates. Hallelujah. Four ways to which we engage the enemy at the gates. And, um, uh, like I said, if you have known that, um, some of these powers of the heavens, you know, uh, they are named and, and um, called after the name of the sons of Jacob. Hallelujah. Uh, all of them, all of them, you know, I, I shared about um, uh, the, the new heavens and new earth. I shared it, this, this thing I'm, going, I'm about to say in there. And what did I say about it? I said uh, the, 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 the world is in ages. The world goes through ages. You know, in Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says God created the stars also, the sun, the moon, and then the stars also. And he did them for what? For signs, for days, for seasons. So we're coming to another season right now in God. Now, I like to tell you this, that all of those seasons, you know, there, I said there are 12 seasons. There are 12 constellations. Now, all of them, you know, you see Leo there, and you see Judah as being a lion. Lion and Leo, they are the same. You see the dwellers of the dweller by the sea there, the crab, and you see one of the sons of Jacob being dwellers of the I think it's uh, uh, Zebulon, which dwells, um, uh, okay, by uh, Naphtali, which dwells by Galilee. That is his own area. That's why it's called the dweller by the sea. You see Libra there, and what do you see at Libra? Well, what do you see at Libra? What do you see at Libra? You see the judge, and Bible called Dan the judge. What do you see in, um, what's his name, um, Reuben? You see it, you, uh, his father called him unstable as water. And you, that's Aquarius. That's the age of Aquarius where we're coming into at this point in time. It is a, an age of deep spirituality. Hallelujah. Now, so what we must be prepared, we must be prepared. Uh, one of the ways we are prepared, like I said, is by identifying our internal structure. What do I mean by our internal structure? The person that God made you to be in Christ. I'm not talking about your redemption privileges. That's what was taught throughout the church age. And it's still very important. You need to know redemption privileges. But you see, God has an inheritance in the saints. He said that you may know what he, what is it, um, let, let, let me let me see whether I can quote it right now. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 15 to 17. And I pray that I will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him that the eyes of your understanding may, may be enlightened. The NEB, the New English Bible says, that the eyes of your heart may be flooded with light, that you may know what the hope of his calling, the reason to which he has called you. In other words, the fact that we are born again <laughs> doesn't mean that we already know the reason to which we have been called. It says, that you may know what the hope of his calling. What was he hoping to get by your call? You know, Paul defined it somewhere as in Romans chapter 8. He said, because the creation was made subject to vanity. Because it was made subject to vanity, to corruption, in hope. You see that word hope? That one day, the sons of God will come. And what will the sons of God do? And liberate creation. So that's the hope of your calling. To, to be a manifesting son that is going to liberate the nations of the earth and the world you know, you know, the system. Jesus died for the system. I said, Jesus died for the world. He died for the individual humans. He also died for the entire systems. So all of these systems belong to us. The educational system belong to us. Uh, the the fashion world belong to us. Humans belong to us. You know, those are the things that the Babylon trade trades upon. We're going to get to Babylon soon, or uh, not today, but soon. One of our studies. Babylon's promises to be very exciting. Now, he now said that you may know what the hope of his coming is upon you. The riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, that you are a saint of God, there is a riches of the glory of God's inheritance. Now, there is an inheritance that he, he has inside you. That he, can we break down that word a little bit? Now, God has something that is his own inside you. 
Some of the time I watch certain films and then there's a man that he doesn't know why people are after him. The forces are after him. The, the CIA is after him. The FBI is after him. Corrupt police people are after him. Russians are after him. And they, they keep getting around after him. They're running after him. Anywhere he goes, he's under, under supervision, under investigation. And then, because, and then one, one, one day, they show a scene and then they tell you that they, you, you got some, some of my things. So God, God has an inheritance inside us. His own. He's not your own. He's God's inheritance. And it must manifest. You can't die and go to heaven if that inheritance does not manifest. <laughs> Praise God. So God is waiting for a season when that inheritance will manifest. So God has something in you. There's an internal structure. The person you are. The you, 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 you. There's that person that you are. You are different from me. I'm different from you. But you have a tribe that is your own. You may be a part of Joseph. You may be a part of Reuben. You may be a part of Dan. You may be a judge. Let me give you an example of Dan. I say Dan is a judge. I met a lady recently. She's not in Nigeria, and we'll be talking a lot. We'll be ch ch chatting, and I saw something about her. She doesn't like being cheated. She doesn't like she doesn't like injustice. I said, "Wow, you are done." You know, there are people like that. That's inheritance of God. That's your construct. That's your inner construct. God, that is is your upon your shoulder that the government will be will, will be formed, will be held. So when you are like that, you, God will make you rise in society to the point where you will become the one overseeing justice. You don't get that. Now, that's what it don't happen. But you have to, first of all, recognize that thing. Now, she doesn't like injustice. Anyway, she sees injustice, she can I know people that can fight for that people. They can leave their own thing and go and fight for another person. They don't like injustice. That is an inheritance of God within them. There are people who are very kind, who can bear other people's bodies and all of that. That is, I think that is a blonde. One of them. Mm, you know, so there are so many of these inheritances in us. You know, the Bible talked about Joseph. He said he's blessed with the, with the, with the blessings of the, of the womb and of the breast. The womb is for conception. The breast is for nurture. Now, what, what does that mean? Those who fight, who advocate, you, they just have it inside them about children, about um, nurture of children, education of children. You see, because why we're saying all of this is because the... the when I say all of this, the, the, the kingdom is going to manifest physically. We have had the kingdom in the spirit all this while, and it's still growing in the spirit. But we have to be getting to, to understand that this kingdom is coming in the physical. Hallelujah. So we have to begin to, to, uh, to bring our people to the understanding of these things, that the kingdom is coming in the physical. And if God has got to use you, God has got to use his inheritance in you. Now, apart from that inheritance, that you may know the, uh, the riches of the glory. Now, that inheritance is, is, is glorious <laughs> and is rich. Now, the height of his riches, the intensity of the riches, the, the abundance of that riches is what we have to come into. A lot of people don't even know that Christ has an inheritance. All we thought Christ has an, has an inheritance is, is healing. Oh, I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. Oh, I'm prosperous. Oh, I'm protected. Oh, we don't look at you. The you, you, you. There's an inheritance. There's a nature. There is something about you that is that Christ has. It's Christ's inheritance. It's, it's, it's God's own, God's own inside your heart. God's very own, very own. That, that's who you are. That's what he has made you to be. Praise God. Now, God says the riches of the glory of his inheritance. Let me, maybe I should even end there. It's his inheritance. It's his own. It's all yours. <laughs> Praise God. Who you are, the kindness that you find yourself exhibiting. The ability to take pressure. The ability to take sacrifice. I'm not saying all of us are going to have to exhibit that because they are part of the fruit of the Spirit. That's part of love. You see, but there are people who exhibit all, some of these things greater and higher and better. They can withstand a great intensity of pressure because of other people. That's who God made you to be. That's, God, that's God's inheritance in, in you. It's not you. It's Christ in you. Now, you have to come into the understanding of that and begin to look for and pray and look for the place of discharging this. I've had people who have been giving food and all of that to people, you know, those who don't have, they just, somebody wants to start a soup kitchen and you want to just give tickets, maybe to church, my Bible say, do good to all men, especially for those who have the household of, of, of faith. And then you want to start giving food to the poor everywhere. That's government. That, you see, that's go is that not what government is supposed to do? 
Why are we doing it? If you are in America, what do you do? The government in America make provision for those kinds of homes where you can get soup, you can get food. Even if you don't have anything, you are, you are destitute, bereft of any, nothing, you don't have anything. You can go to some homes and they will take you there, they will take you in, and then they will feed you there. That's government. Now, if the government of Nigeria is failing to do that, and you are, you find yourself be, do, beginning to do that, then the kingdom of God is coming to you. Because it means that what the government is supposed to do, you are now the one, so you are government, you are a governor. You understand? That's what you are a governor. Now, do you know what is going to happen? With time, this present physical government that we're seeing is going to come, they're going to answer. Say, we can't do it anymore. We can't. They're going to, you're going to find your way, your way, like Joseph, because Joseph is an example of what is going to happen in the last days. You're going to find yourself there at the, at the, at the very top. Now, but even Joseph was not an adequate example. But Joseph was just a... a, a it was, a, it was a ruler under Pharaoh. But you, we will come into the place of overall rulership. Hallelujah. Now, even some of those American states, I mean, the Western states, America, Britain, there are, there are some of those things that they, do, they cannot even do well. Even with them, there are still believers who are doing things. There are churches who are doing things. And all that. This is not social gospel. Though. Don't confuse it with social gospel. We're talking about the government of God coming upon the earth. We're talking about the power. It's going to come through power. It's coming through grace. It's coming through redemption. Those who do this are people who understand that the redemption of Christ, the time has come for us to exhibit the nature of Christ that is in us. Hallelujah. So, um, so they have seen that this... Um, this season is come, another season has come on the earth. And you know that this season is called the season of uh, um, the spirit coming to the material. The, from the spirit realm, the spirit realm is going to come and join the material world. And that is exactly what God is saying. Paul, uh, John says, and I saw, and I, I, and I saw, I was taken to a great mountain. And I saw, where is that great mountain? The mountain of the house of the Lord. And what did he see? He saw um, Jerusalem. And the new Jerusalem coming to the earth like a bride. Hallelujah. That's talking about the fullness of Christ coming on, on, onto us. Hallelujah. Or, uh, it says, like, it says it's robed like a, she's robed like a bride. And, you know, and then uh, it has 12 gates. The world was very high. He's talking about the tightness of the city. Now, when the city comes in and the kingdom of God has come, that means the fullness of Christ has come. Now, because the Bible says that when that city is here, it shall be, uh, that it, it will come to pass the same by Prophet Isaiah, we say that in the last day, the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established on top of the mountain, shall be exalted above the hills, and all the nations of the earth shall flow into it. All nations, the Arab nations will flow, the Hindu nations will flow, the Confucianist nations will flow, the Taoist nations will flow, the pagan nations will flow. They will flow into it because the kingdom has come, because they can see the kingdom. Now, let's talk about a little bit about the kingdom mentality. So, kingdom mentality. Is beyond church mentality. In the church age, God was the God of the church alone. You had to be born again, and then you, you say your sinner's prayer, and then you are the only one that God cares about. But in the kingdom mentality, it's beyond that. You know, it, that, that's not, that's not, that, that's church. Church age says, I don't care. I don't care what's happening, uh, whether Nepal collapses or, or it's raised. You know why? You know why I don't care? Because I have money to buy generator. See, I don't care whether the, the, the dollar is 1,000. We have seen it. Have you not heard about it? Can you raise the light a little bit more? Uh-huh, because it's casting shadows here. Now, you know, say I don't care uh, about how many uh, dollars uh, will be, I mean, how many naira, maybe a thousand naira to a dollar, as long as I have my money. But you see, in the church age, we should care. Praise God. Rather, did I say the church age? In the kingdom age, we should care. We should care about what happens in the world. The church age is not um, the, 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 the kingdom age is not like the church age because in the church in the church age God was the God of just only believers. In the kingdom age, God is the God of the whole earth, and He wants to rule the earth through us. Did you get that? God wants to rule the world through us. Hallelujah! So, and He's not going to rule the world when you are corrupt through you. It can't bring, that's what, it can't bring, 
okay, for example, you, you are not true with corruption, you're still, still, you know, stealing money and all. Now, and you know, you're not made a, 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 a ruler over a particular nation or a sphere of authority. It's God that makes you that rule that, to be to be the ruler. Hallelujah. It's not by it's not by democracy. Hallelujah. Now you come into that place. And then you, are, you now eat, you now begin to siphon money into your pocket. <laughs> in Africa, we call it eating money. You know, misappropriate money. You know, misappropriate money. You know, and then it, that that can never be the kingdom of God because the kingdom of God is 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 ruled by God's priests and kings. The Bible says He has made us kings and priests, and we're going to rule. So God is raising sons at this moment, and that's why we begin to we must begin to um, uh, understand our call. Our call is beyond um, just living for ourselves. And our call is not living by the church a standard. Oh, I'm born again, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So what? I'm born again, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So what? I'm going to heaven. So what? God doesn't even want you to die to go to heaven. God wants you to be here to rule. Because Christ is coming. You're going to, you're, we're all supposed to make a system that Christ can rule upon here. We're going to give this kingdom to Christ and then he will give it to God and that God may be all in all. Did you get that? So it's going to be through you and I. That's why we're beginning to, I'm sharing about this thing so that you can hear. I'm trumpeting these things. It's going to be in this natural world, this natural world, this world that we call natural. That's where God, everything is going to happen. It's not going to be that, oh, the, the, the heaven will fly, the, or the sky will go. Then God will now transport us to Jupiter. When we get to Jupiter, we'll now start on that world. No, 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 no. It's not about that. It's about Christ coming in us into fullness. And to the extent to which he has come in us, we begin to rule in that place. And to that extent, we begin to rule. We are placed in place of position. That's why covetousness have to die. If we have clothes and um, raiment and, raiment and uh, food, then we shall there will be content. That doesn't mean that we will not be exceedingly rich. We will be exceedingly, in fact, excessively rich. You know why? Because God is going to be entrusting the riches of the kingdom into our hands. Ex- you know what I call excessively? That means that money is not just for you. It's for others. So God is going to be giving people great amount of resources that they will begin to wonder, what do I do with this? But you know, those kind of people that are going to give that money to are not going to be people who begin to wonder, what do I do with this? Because they were already, before that kind of money came, they already had the heart and they were already, they were already doing the will of God. He that is faithful in little shall be judged faithful in much. They are going to, to help people. They are going to, be going to uh, live their lives in sacrifice and in love for people. So when that money comes, they are not wondering what to do with it. They, they already have a pattern set in their hearts. Hallelujah. So uh, I'm going to be rounding up uh, right now. Uh, we're rounding up with the fifth episode right now. If you have any questions, you can let me know. I guess we'll continue some other time, probably tomorrow. I pray that the Lord will give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation, the knowledge of Him, that the eyes of understanding will be enlightened, that we'll know more than ever before the hope of His coming upon our lives and the riches of the glory of His inheritance in us as saints, and the exceeding greatness of His power to us as believers according to the work of the mighty power which He wrought in Christ when He raised Him from the dead in the name of Jesus Christ. So that we, not, we can also know that some of these things that we're talking about are non heavenly realities, but they are physical, earthly realities. The city of God is, a, is, a, is an earthly reality. The streets of that city is an, is a, is an earthly reality. The gold on that, on that street is, a, is an earthly reality. You know, not that we're going to have stepping on gold and all that, but it talks about, let me just give you an, an inkling into that. It talks about the superiority of our work because gold is the most superior of all metals. You know, so, you know, uh, that's the way it is rated by man. So God use what we rate the highest, you know, to, to speak to us. So our, it means our work is going to be the more, more, the highest of standard. That's what it means. Hallelujah. God bless you. We'll meet again on Engaging the Enemy at the Gates. Amen. <laughs>